from the nearest hospital, emergency department are closing down because of the shopping crisis. In our, in our pediatric hospital, we are seeing a whole bunch of news, but they have only recently joined our adult hospital that are in the worst cases that we have ever seen in our lifetime. This is not a debate about whether or not they're going to make it. Why are they not doing these things? 
You know, just to say for a year and a half, we're bringing in 6,000 staff when we need 40,000 in our hospitals. We need 56,000 in our long-term care homes. We have the money. They can't find the staff to hire at this point. It's ridiculous. So ask the question, why is he doing nothing in the face of this? Ontarians should be pouring into the streets, pouring on the public pressure to force the Ford government to finally do something. It is no accident how we got here. Ontario has funded its hospitals for years at the lowest rate of any province in the country, by far. Shame! to force the hospitals to downsize. We now have the fewest hospital beds left of any province in Canada and almost anywhere in the entire OECD. In fact, among developed nations, only Chile and Mexico have fewer hospital beds left than our province does. It's unbelievable what's happened here. And every single thing they cut from public hospitals, they private cut. Everything. And that therein lies the rub. That is the agenda. The Ford government, while doing nothing, is a lead into the summer, a uh, double the funding for the private for profit clinics, the hospital clinics. They have continued to do nothing about the staffing crisis while they announced their intention to privatize hospital services in August, even as almost 100 emergency departments in public hospitals across the province were closed. It sounds like it is completely conspiracy theory to say, you know, they would uh, foment the crisis, or at the very least, let the crisis uh, burn on, unabated, in order to privatize. But what other explanation is there? At this point, we as Ontarians have to stand up. We have to demand action. I don't know how we're going to get through this winter, but let's send a message of love and support. Let's tell the healthcare workers in the hospital and the leadership how much we respect and admire them, how deeply we appreciate them. Let's beg them to stay on for a little while longer. And in the meantime, everyone, call your MPP, uh, email your MPP, pour on the public pressure, and demand that they do their job and get boots on the ground in these hospitals. Thank you so much. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just ask you, we wanted to send these messages for the hospital workers here on Hospital Road. They're all kinds of hard work. So everyone, you can just fill them in, and we have all kinds of things that you can attach them up and down the street. We just want to make, make sure that we
And as I said before, the lack of dignity. I recently had a patient, she was a little girl, and she was sitting in the hallway, as many of my patients do, with her mother. And right beside them was a gentleman who was on the phone. is in crisis. 
We were, we have projected this shortfall. No one listened. We have a minister of health who won't even admit that we have a problem. They tell us that they are committing more money to nursing recruitment, but it does not fix the current problem. We need to lay blame where blame belongs. And this health care crisis is their problem. It's the Ford government's problem. And one thing is very clear. Ford and his, Ford and his party have no answers to fix these issues. But we, we collectively do have, do have answers to fix it. One of these is Acknowledge your defeat with 124. The court struck down this bill, which capped our nurses and healthcare professional wages at 1% per year. It's, dis it's disrespectful, it's wage depression, and it's pushed our healthcare system beyond the breaking point. As nurses and healthcare workers, we've appealed to Ford time and time again and repeal this un to repeal this unjust law, and he has refused. He's absolutely refused, making the crisis in our healthcare system even worse as our members have left the profession in droves. Our recent win is not only a huge victory for workers, it is giving Doug Ford an opportunity to do the right thing. Do the right thing, Doug Ford. Throw out your plan to appeal. Invest in nurses and healthcare professionals today. So, we've seen his plans to privatize. We've seen it across Ontario with the opening of clinics for surgeries, etc. And this is taking away from public health care by pulling our resources out of the public system. As nurses, we've already seen this as our colleagues have left the public system to go and work for private agencies. Agencies that are paid three and four times a top RN wage. This is paid by hospitals and long-term care and other sector employers. It's a shame. We can't let this happen. We have to stop it. Ontario's public health care system is not Doug Ford's to sell. Our public health care system has been built up over generations. Our families have invested in it. And we need to tell Doug Ford it's not for sale to his corporate buddy. That's why we're here today from the Ontario Nurses Association. We're here with all of you, and we will continue to work hand in hand with all our allies to fight for the investments we need in our public health care. Thank you. So, 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 solidarity. So, 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 solidarity. website we're currently asking folks to sign up to be Medicare defenders uh, we'd love for all of you here today to please sign up and say to Doug Ford that you are a Medicare defender that you want to defend our public health care this is not a membership list or anything like that it's just a message support we need as many people signing this, uh, this petition as we can to send the message to the government that there's mass support behind this uh, so please uh, there should be folks holding up QR codes uh, if you have phones and you want to scan them, it'll take you to the link. No? Do we have just the website? Okay. Um, <laughs> you can just go on our website, actually. So it's OntarioHealthCoalition.ca. <laughs> um, and please send the link to your friends, post on social media, too, so that we can get affiliate Medicare to
I'd now like to invite up JP Hornick.
welcome Mary Jo Neighbors. Mary Jo is a mom and daughter with a parent in long-term care and a tireless advocate for COVID-19 measures, public health care, and long-term care reform. Hi everybody, the energy here is awesome. Today, I'm, I'm here today because I wholeheartedly believe we can't talk about health care in Ontario without acknowledging that SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, is still among us. Yeah. And it's yes. still wreaking havoc everywhere it goes. Yeah. I know maybe even some people here don't realize it. And if you'll just give me a few minutes of your attention, you'll understand why I think it's directly related here today. Although much of the world would like to move on from this virus that has brought so much strife and devastation into our lives, the reality is it's still here. It's still infecting reinfecting, killing, and it's impacting healthcare as we speak. We have had more cases and deaths because of COVID in 2022, and it's not even over yet, than any other year of the pandemic. Yep. With each passing day, more and more evidence is showing the tremendous amount of harm COVID infections, and especially reinfections, are causing our citizens, our education and healthcare systems, and our economy. COVID-19 is a disease that can cause a myriad of issues, including serious organ damage. One's lungs, liver, kidneys, brain, and heart can all be damaged by COVID-19. And there is mounting evidence that COVID-19 infections and reinfections lead to immune dysregulation, which makes it potentially harder for us to fight off other viruses, so lending to more severe outcomes as we see in our hospitals right now. And think of the needs of the 50 to 25 percent estimated to suffer long COVID. All of this damage is going to mean an increase in health care needs. Whether that be more emergency room visits because of sudden heart attacks and strokes, increased need for organ donors while having fewer people with viable organs to donate, more support for type 1 diabetes, which is on the rise in children with previous COVID infections, increased home care needs, and more dementia-specific training as people with previous COVID infections are showing early onset dementia characteristics. It is clear that meeting the recommendations made to this provincial government some four years already by a plethora of credible science-backed and rational medical and scientific community members is an obvious way to decrease the current and future burden on our healthcare system. One of the many ways explained by people today in place of expanding private healthcare. So I am imploring all of you, whether you go to your MPP's office, make a phone call, email them, make a social media post, write a letter, I implore, the me I implore you to go and ask this question, why? Why is some random Ontario citizen informing me of the reality and the ripple effects of COVID-19? It should be. Why is there no education campaign by our provincial government about these real risks and the many ways we can make things better? Why is this government okay allowing outbreak after outbreak in long-term care, retirement homes, and other community care, causing devastating isolation periods to the residents? Why is this government okay letting a virus spread that data shows clearly affects racial lives and racial communities more than others? same group that will suffer most if more of our health care is privatized. Why is this government okay allowing our precious health care workers to be continuously exposed to the virus, potentially impacting their physical and cognitive health and adding to staff shortages? Why is this government okay allowing Ontario's children to be harmed by it? Missing school, struggling to breathe, dying on hospital. And finally, why has Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Kieran Moore, yet to say explicitly that COVID is undeniably airborne? You cannot Shame. properly manage something if you cannot say the words associated with it. I am also asking the media to do the same. Ask them why, but take it a step further. Ask them what data is supporting their actions and who is providing it. Premier Ford and Minister of Health, Sylvia Jones, 
No more blaming previous governments for the debacle of Ontario's healthcare system and acting like privatization is the only option. This is year five for you. You are the previous government. <laughs> Do something. <laughs>
except for the ones that can pay. And we saw that. We saw that when people needed access to COVID testing so they could go into long term care homes to see their loved ones, they couldn't get access to a COVID test. Why? Because people who could afford to travel were the ones that could pay to get a test in a private clinic. Nobody else could get access. And that is what we saw in the pandemic. Pharmacy technicians and pharmacists in the public sector stepped up and stepped in to provide clinics in the most underserved areas in this province. And they were the ones that did that. Why? Because they believe that everybody should have equal access to a vaccine and critical medical treatment and intervention. And this government sends extra vaccines into predominantly white neighborhoods with high income that had low COVID rates. And the people that needed it didn't get access. And that's what private health care system is. It's triage those that don't need it but can pay to get to the front of the line. And we need to stop that. And that's why we're here today. The 25,000 uh, health professionals, social workers, dietitians, speak language pathologists, physiotherapists, and all the others I've mentioned already. We stand in solidarity with our colleagues, our physicians and nurses who have been working with the staff, but we're all together in this. And we're only going to win when we fight together. And all of Ontario stands together united to protect our public health care system. Because it's worth it.
education workers showed that you can catch his attention. Labor in this province showed you can catch his attention. The people in this province want public health care. They want it protected. They don't want Ford destroying it. Let's mobilize everyone we know. Fight for health care. Fight for our lives. Thank you. You are a patient. Can you please raise your hand? Yes. A lot of hands. If you know someone who's in long term care, could you raise your hand? If you've ever been to an emergency room, can you raise your hand? Everyone. This just goes to show that there's a lot of solidarity for all the healthcare workers who are here, who are in the building, who are all across Ontario. Solidarity from us to all of you because. The conditions of our care are the conditions of the work. Um, hey, I would now like to invite our final speaker, MPP and Dr. Adil Shaman.
the lights do it. This is the fight of our life. We need to fight for our health care system. Thank you for being here. Don't stop coming in. Let's do this together. Because it's like, uh, <laughs> to start these things new, you're like, you're just playing on hard right? 